All right, guys, how you doing? Okay, so I know you hate fluff and videos, so let's just get straight to it. Remember, these are beginner tips. I will do a follow-up video with more advanced stuff shortly. Cheers, guys. So yeah, the blue hole is a dangerous place, and the deeper you go, the more dangerous it becomes. In the early game, you'll want to stick to shallower waters until you've upgraded your gear and learned how to defend yourself. Some of the dangers that you'll face in the deeper waters include strong currents, which will just sweep you away, you, you can't really swim against them. There are very dangerous creatures, like the deeper you go, the more dangerous they get. Some of these creatures, such as sharks and giant squid, they can very easily kill you. And uh, yeah, low oxygen levels. You see, the deeper the waters are, the much lower the, the oxygen content in the water. If you stay down too long, you'll start to lose oxygen much quicker and, of course, eventually drown. So if you're a beginner, it's best to stick with the shallower waters until you're ready to take on the dangers of the deeper depths. The better your gear, the easier it will be to survive the blue hole. Make sure to upgrade your diving suit as soon as possible so that you can stay underwater for longer. You'll also want to craft and upgrade weapons so that you can defend yourself against the more dangerous creatures. Some of the benefits of upgrading your gear include increased oxygen capacity, so a better diving suit will allow you to stay underwater for longer without running out of oxygen. This of course will give you more time to explore and find those valuable items. You can get improved defense, better weapons which will give you a better chance of defending yourself against the dangerous creatures in the blue hole. This will help you stay alive and keep exploring and increased carry capacity. This suit upgrade will obviously allow you to carry more items such as fish and treasures. So if you want to make the most of your time during dives, it is very important to upgrade your gear as soon as possible. Okay, this one is a bit of a no-brainer, I know, but as you're diving, keep an eye on the oxygen meter to the bottom left corner of the screen. If it gets too low, you're going to start to lose health. Make sure to surface regularly to refill your oxygen. Some tips for managing your oxygen levels include planning your dives. Before you dive, take a moment to plan your route. This will help you avoid getting lost and running out of oxygen. Surface regularly. Don't try to stay underwater for too long. Surface regularly to refill your oxygen and have a rest. Use your air wisely. Don't use your oxygen on unnecessary activities such as swimming against the current. And be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to the oxygen meter and the creatures around you. If you start to feel tired or if you see a dangerous creature, just surface immediately, you'll be fine. By following these steps, you can easily manage your oxygen levels and stay safe while diving in the blue hole. Yes, of course, there are treasure chests hidden all over the blue hole. They contain all sorts of valuable items such as gold, weapons, upgrades. Keep an eye out for them as you're diving. Some of them are actually pretty well hidden, so you'll need to keep an eye out proper and do some exploring to find them all. However, it is worth the effort as some of these chests contain valuable, sometimes life-saving items. When you die, which you probably will, uh, you'll only be able to keep one of the items that you've found while diving, so choose wisely. Now some tips here would just be to consider the value of the item. If you have a valuable item, you might want to keep that. Consider the rarity of the item. If you have a very rare item, such as a fish that's part of a best-selling dish on your menu, you might want to keep that. I mean, rare items can be difficult to find and they can be pretty valuable. Consider your current needs. If you're in the early game and you need to upgrade your diving suit, you might want to keep an item that can be used to upgrade your gear or to craft a weapon. If you're in the later game, you might look to make more money, so you might want something that can be sold for a high price. Consider your playstyle. If you're a more aggressive player, you might want to keep a weapon or an item that can help defend yourself. If you're a more passive player, you might want to keep an item that can help you explore the blue hole more easily. 
Ultimately, the decision A, which item you keep is up to you. There is no right or wrong answer. The best item is just going to depend on your individual playstyle and needs. Now, Dave's phone has a number of handy apps and features that can help you succeed in the game. I'm not going to cover them all in this video, but you can use the contact app to get tips from Dave's friends, you can use the email app to keep track of your assignments, the to-do list app to stay organised. Um, yeah, by using Dave's phone regularly, you can get loads of helpful tips, stay organised, complete your assignments more easily. Now, the more varied your menu, the more customers you'll attract. So just make sure to include a variety of dishes, including both common and rare fish. Some tips for creating a varied menu would include exploring the blue hole, find different types of fish. The more fish you find, the more dishes you can create. Then you want to research different recipes. There are many, many, many different recipes available in game. Experiment with different recipes to find the ones that customers like best. And check the management app on Dave's phone to remind yourself of the best selling items on the menu. By keeping a varied menu, you can attract more customers and make more money. The amount of gold that Dave earns for cups of tea, green tea, is actually based on how well poured the cups are. If the cups are too full or not full enough, then you're going to get far less than a perfectly poured cup. Green tea can actually make you a decent amount of money in Dave the Diver in the early game, as long as you're able to pour effectively. More drink varieties, including variations on the mini games, are introduced as the story progresses, but it's always a case of practice makes perfect and you'll soon get the hang of it. Yeah, I touched on this previously, but take note of your best selling dishes. After each night of service, you'll get a stats screen that shows you which dishes were your best sellers. Keep track of these dishes so that you can make sure you have enough ingredients on hand. Here are some tips for tracking your best selling dishes. You could keep a running list of your best selling dishes, just literally just keep a list at the side of your keyboard or whatever, and this will help you to know what dishes to make more of. You could just pay attention to the orders that the customers are placing. If you see a lot of customers ordering the same dish, then that's a good indication that <laughs> it's a bestseller. But of course, the easiest way is just checking the stats screen at the end of each nighty service. The stats screen will show you which, I think it's top three dishes were your best sellers. By tracking your best sellers, you can make sure that you're always prepared to meet customer demand. And yeah, last but not least, build a strong team. Yeah, the staff members that you hire for your sushi restaurant can have a big impact on your profits. Make sure to build a team with a variety of strengths and weaknesses. That way you can cover all your bases and serve your customers the best possible food. Some tips for building a strong team would include hiring staff members with different skills. This will give you a more versatile team that can handle a variety of tasks. Hire staff members who are friendly and efficient. This will create a positive atmosphere in your restaurant and ensure that your customers are happy. And of course, train those staff members well. This will ensure that they know how to do their jobs properly and more efficiently. And there you have it, my 10 beginner tips for Dave the Diver. I hope you find something useful here. If you did, please leave me a little thumbs up. If you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't, I apologize. Uh, Feel free to leave me a thumbs down, I'll try and do better. If you want to support the channel, it costs nothing to hit that subscribe button. I will be making a follow-up video soon. If you have any questions, leave them below, I'll try to answer everyone. And until next time guys, look after yourselves, take care, and 